Hello and welcome back to my next video on setting up the all-in-one Graupner flight controllers. Now I've completed the, the build, fitting the it on the quad. We've set up the basic settings for the flight controller. Now we need to actually set up phases on the radio because without phases, well, it's just going to be a regular attitude flying quad. And maybe that's all you want, but I think you can get a lot more out of this flight controller so let's go into that first off you go what what does this screen on has to do with any of that it has to do with the fact that I use a lot of switches to do my phases and when I load the model or turn on my radio I want the radio to alert me when I'm have some of my switches or a switch in the wrong position typically all my switches are flipped away from me pushed away from me by default that's where I like to turn my radio on but in this case, I have one switch that needs to be in the center position. So you'll see switch one here is highlighted saying, hey, it's not in the correct position. And if I flip that to center, the screen will go away and everything is honky dory. The way that you set that up is you go into menu, special system notice, and scroll all the way to the bottom where you see start switch position. Make sure your switches are where you want them to be when you turn on the model or turn on the radio or load the model. Hit the store button and then make sure that the warning is turned on so that it'll actually alert you when that happens. So fairly simple setup and highly recommended um, for any of your models, honestly. Uh, check the switches, it'll check your throttle positions, all that kind of stuff as well. While we're here, there's a little bit of legwork I do before I actually set up my phases. And it means you got to think through the way you want to set up, maybe just dot it out and on paper, etc., whatever you want to do. But I do have a few things that I want to share with you as I go through this. The first one is I actually use the, the data I get from the GPS as one of my inputs to make some decisions. So I've set up a sensor switch here, looking at the GPS distance coming from the quadcopter, saying that if this value changes from a low value to a high value, turn this on for me, set it set it on. I've set up a range. Hmm, I don't know how I got a 9,000 foot in there. That's not what I intended to have on there. <laughs> Let's change that to something a little less. Well, that's good enough. Saying that when I cross a 2,050 foot, turn on the output for me on this. And so when the, when I get to 2,000 feet away from me, or from the point the original, you turn on the quad, it will enable that switch for me. That's just an input that I can do whatever I want to. I can use that sensor switch now in my logical switches so that I can set up the ways I expect things to happen. In this case, I have a couple of things set up here. Um, very first ones, I have, and I probably should, I've renamed this a little bit better. So let's go and do that. I want this to say and it's always good to to name your your switches or inputs your outputs anything just so you remember what that the actual result is from the outcome. But in this case, I'm looking at switch one and DT eight, not and or DT8, either one of those two would initiate a return home for me. So if I flip switch one to the forward position facing towards me, in this case, I gotta get the right switch, you'll see that it activates the output there. And you notice at the same time when I did that, the output for return home turned on here, right? So, uh, huh. I need to select that switch too. All right. Because all of these are all together, I'm taking L1 as an input here. That's my first input here. Or, what did I just do? Or that S1 that I just set up that says if I go past 2000 feet, that, that'll turn on as well. So any one of switch one, DT8, or switch S1, which is my sensor switch, would initiate a return home on on the quad um, very important to have all of that set up so you safety you can add other ones in here 
um, extend that quite a bit if you want. That's just the default that I've set up for the moment. Right, so next one, I have also, since I use DT8 as a uh, return home while flying, I don't want it to reset my timer at the same time. So timer reset is ended with switch eight. Switch eight is my motor disable switch. So switch eight, when pushed to the towards the back, well, I think that's something. I guess it'll work in this way, but uh, typically I like to use the switch where it shows you on or off on it. But for the moment, that works fine. So if I hit DT8 right now, since the motors are turned off, it'll actually re reset my timer as well. The next two logical items has to do with auto flip. The way I uh, auto flip wor works is that flight control has to be in attitude mode for auto flip to work. So I do a couple of checks here. First off, I make sure that switch one is not in return home or in, in waypoint mode. And I check that switch four is in attitude mode. Attitude mode in switch four is all the way back for me. So I do that. And then I look for switch six as a temporary input to say that I am in attitude mode, which take six will then flip the, the quad. You can actually add another one in here and say, use the GPS if I'm a, higher than this, then activate auto flip as well, because you don't want to be too low when you do the auto flip since it does drop just a little bit. Um, anyway, so there, there you go. Auto flip logic included. Then headless or carefree mode is another one that I look at. And since that is actually combined with the autopilot mode, so I'm checking that I switch four is in autopilot mode and that switch five, which is my carefree switch is on, then I activate headless or carefree autopilot mode. So that's just logical switches. You can play around with it, do all kinds of interesting things. But now we're actually gonna go and look and see how is that actually used in phases. So for phases, I have set up attitude mode, raid mode, auto flip mode, autopilot mode, carefree autopilot, waypoints, go home, and then of course the motor is off, the motor disabled. As I mentioned, switch eight is my motor disabled switch. And I flip that, you can see motor off, and then it goes to attitude mode. Attitude mode, as soon as I turn on, that's my next mode when I turn on my motors. Now I'm uh, in, the, in the fly mode. So first thing, attitude mode, that is where auto leveling, all that kind of stuff for the flight controller, very easy to operate, it's simple to do. And that's the default. There's no switch associated with it. That is just, if no other switch is active, then that's the one that's active. Then rate mode. So switch four, I have said, when I put this in the middle position, that is my rate mode. That's the typical mode that you fly in, allows you to fly the the quadcopter are really good, do loops, all kinds of interesting things you can do with it. So raid mode is the typical mode that you wanna fly in. The next one we're gonna look at then is autopilot mode. And you go, oh, I just skipped auto flip. Well, auto flip is only there because, well, actually it could have been two as well. It doesn't matter. It just, it uses that L5, you, that logical switch we just set up or looked at a little bit earlier, it uses that input. So if I go back and put myself in attitude mode and then hit my auto flip button, you see I go into auto flip. Anyway, switch four, all the way pulled towards me is autopilot. You can see that happens there. Carefree autopilot needs an additional input. And I assigned that to switch six. So when I fl flip switch six while in autopilot mode, then that comes on. Note that when I now, if I go to rate mode, that carefree switch has no impact because I'm using a logical switch. Okay. All right, so we'll turn that back off. Waypoint. Again, it doesn't care what, for waypoint and go home, it doesn't care what any of the other switches are, since it overrides anything that's above that. So if I flip switch one all the way back away from me, I go into waypoint mode. So if you went ahead and used the, 
If you went ahead and used an Android phone to set up waypoints and uploaded it to your flight controller, you can initiate waypoints here and it'll start following the waypoints that you've set up in, in that Graupner app that runs only unfortunately on a Android phone or an Android tablet. If I flip my switch one to go home, you can see it will flip into go home and there we go. So this is all my, my phases configured. By itself, setting up phases does nothing, right? This is just switches setting up an indication. That's all it is. There's no, nothing actually will happen with the quad until such time that you go and set up your controls. Okay, now that we have our phases defined, we need to actually go and set up our channels so that the flight controller knows what phase we're in. And the way we do that is we go into control set. Note that I'm not gonna to touch the first four channels. You have the ability here to go and change the way that some of the, your sticks work in some of the phases. I am not gonna go into that detail here. That is just, you can sort of put up some deal rates, whatever you feel like for the phases to make it feel differently in each one of those modes. The three that's important for all of the phases that we're gonna look in here is channel five, six, and seven. And we're gonna start with attitude mode. Attitude mode is, your, is my default mode. That's the one that's just stable, easy to fly. If you're a learner, that's the mode you wanna be in. And by default, channel five, six, and seven will be zero. So make sure you are in attitude mode. Always keep an eye on that one in the top and then go and make sure that you are not looking like this or that or any of that. You wanna have the flat line set to zero, All right? And that's true for channel five, channel six, and channel seven. All three of them are zero. So the next phase we wanna look at is rate mode. Note that channel seven stays at zero. Channel six stayed at zero, but channel five has now gone to plus 100. So attitude mode, it's zero, at rate mode, 100. It actually just needs to be above 50, but I, I figured just we'll use zero and 100 as all my outputs that controls it much better. It's just confusing to use mm, 49 or 50, whatever. We'll just use zero, 100 to do all these phases. So that's the difference between attitude and rate mode. It's just channel five's output changed from zero to 100 when you flip that switch. Now we can set up autopilot mode. And you notice that mode now changed, or channel five changed from plus 100 to negative 100. So autopilot mode, you have to have negative 100 set on channel five. Channel six stayed at zero. Channel seven went to negative 100. So both Channel five and channel seven are set to negative 100 for autopilot mode. Now, remember that I said that logical switch to say carefree mode. What happened as soon as I flip carefree mode, note that channel seven flipped from negative 100 to plus 100. Channel six still stayed at zero, whereas channel five stayed at negative 100. So now I am in carefree order of pilot mode. All right, we'll take it out of that because I don't need to be in there. The next modes that we're gonna look at is waypoint. So for waypoint, channel five, negative 100, channel six, plus 100, and channel seven, negative 100. So that's waypoint setup. Go home. If I can get there. Channel seven, negative 100. Channel six, negative 100. And guess what? Channel five, negative 100. All three, those channels are set to negative 100. So I've done all my modes except for one. 
and that one is auto flip. To do auto flip, you gotta make sure that you are in attitude mode. Remember we set up those logical switches to check for that. And I gotta pull up my switch that I temporary switch. Remember it's just a temporary switch. So long as I pull it, you see auto flip is up there. Channel five needs to be at zero as an attitude mode, of course. Same with channel seven. Oh, I just found that I forgot to set this one up. All right, channel seven at zero and then channel six. And this is the one that's actually gonna do the work for me. So if I, as soon as I pull that switch auto flip, you'll see that I go not to 100, but to 125. So just making sure that when you uh, do attitude or uh, auto flip, it expects that number to be above 120. So I chose 125 and that will initiate the auto flip mode for you. So that is all the phases set up at this point in time. I hope this has been helpful, useful, informative. Leave a comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll uh, post something else for you next time. Thanks for watching.